Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. I am so excited. All right, so this is what I have left after, not all of it, this is what I have left, some of what I have left after doing my festive fun stamp a stack. So if you missed the video series, there is a festive fun stamp a stack on the blog, KitchenTableStamper.com. There are class packets available while supplies last. This packet makes seven cards, the seven cards that you see here, with extra designer series paper. We're gonna use three out of the 12 sheets to create these cards. That means that you'll have nine six by six sheets left. You'll have the iridescent dots and ribbon left. And so I thought it would be fun to take what's left from my Festive Fun Stampa stack and follow up with a treat box that you can make. So if you bought this stamp stack when you're done with the cards, you just need a little bit of cardstock. We all have cardstock and some of the materials that are left over from your card kit to make this awesome candy box. Now I designed this box to fit some standard treats. I thought it would be fun because then we can use this box again and again throughout the year for all of our gift giving occasions, right? So this box fits the um, individual full size Butterfinger, 100 grand and Baby Ruth. So these Nestle candy bars, you can find these at your checkout stand. And it also fits the Hershey bar with whole almonds. So if you missed our Hershey bar box last week, the Hershey bar box that we did was for the milk chocolate or the popping candy, the cookies and cream, the 1.55 ounce bars without nuts, but this bar was too small and it kind of got lost in that box. This is the perfect box for your Hershey um, with almond aficionados. It just fits so perfectly. All right, so this is our box. We're going to start by taking some Merry Bright and Bold Designer Series paper. I'm using the ones that are left from my kit. You'll have two full six by six sheets of each of these patterns. So that's why I chose them for this project. And our designer series paper is one and a half by five and three quarters. You'll need two matching pieces and one and one eighth by four and three quarters. You'll need a contrasting piece of your choice. Our box today is granny apple green so you have to add a little cardstock of your choice of color I used granny apple green you'll need some shaded spruce I did these two punch ahead this is the bow punch for my leaves and I did the decorative circle punch for my matte layer and then I have a little basic white circle here. So all of this can be cut from scraps that you already have. This is the two and one eighth inch circle. And I cut this using the stylish shapes. All right, so let's go ahead and work on our box. We're gonna do this according to the template. The template picture will be in the printable project sheet on the blog, kitchentablestamper.com. And you just click the link below in the description if you're on YouTube where it says project details, click here, that'll take you to the blog post. When you're at the blog post, you'll go ahead and um, scroll to the bottom of the post. Below the embedded video, you'll find a button that says today's project sheet. Just click there. All right, so we're going to start with our eight by five and a half inch granny apple green cardstock in the Simply Scored tool on the five and a half inch side. On the five and a half inch side, you're gonna score at three quarters, two and a half, three and a quarter, and five. Then rotate one time to the right, which puts you on the eight inch side, and score at three quarters, six and three quarters, and seven and a half. All right, let's go ahead and work the score lines with a bone folder and trim according to the template. All right, let's go ahead and trim this. You wanna start with your skinniest panel on the right and your two 
um, panels up on the top. We're gonna cut out this bottom rectangle here in the bottom right corner. And then we're gonna cut out the two rectangles at the top. That's gonna make our glue tab for the side of the box. Now, instead of just cutting the first two rectangles, we're gonna cut the first four. So two, and then cut across on the score line and remove the four. Now we're going to cut a little angle cut and then straight along the score line, you're going down two score lines and then you'll remove this little tab and just add a little angle cut to your top tab. Skip to the next score line, cut straight along the rectangles, cut an angle on the square tab, remove this little rectangle and then angle the tuck tab just a little bit. On the bottom, you'll just liberate the tabs straight on the rectangles, angle down the squares, all the way across the bottom of the box. And there we go. Now let's add our designer series paper pieces in the larger segment centered. If you haven't already picked up the Festive and Fun Stampa Stack class packet, head over to kitchentablestamper.com slash shop. Filter on the right hand side if you're on a desktop or laptop or on the bottom if you're on a mobile device for class packets. You can see if we have any left. If we have any left this weekend only, so Thursday through Monday night, we're offering a coupon with the purchase of Festive and Fun. So you'll purchase the Festive and Fun Stampa Stack and you'll receive in your email a coupon for, t for $5 off of our Festive Tags Stampa Stack. We're offering two um, holiday card Stampa Stacks at one time. Stampin' Up! has had some um, product availability issues. And um, so because of the festive tags kit being out of stock, we've got the class packets for two Stampa Stacks that are kind of piled up on top of each other. But the good news is, is that's going to make a um, opportunity for you to get your holiday cards done really easy with our help. So if you order festive fun, we will give you $5 off coupon for your festive tag Stampa Stack class packet purchase. Just look out for that coupon in your email. All right, so I'm rounding the tuck tabs. I've added some adhesive down the side. And next I wanna put a little thumb notch. You guys have heard me say it a million times, I cannot find center. I'm gonna use my half inch circle punch, but I need to mark the center of this so that I can aim for it. I'm gonna grab my Simply Score tool back in here and use the centering ruler on this tool. I love that this tool also has a centering ruler. It's easy, I always have this tool out on the table and I can just line up and mark the zero with my stylus. Now that is a no doubt center point for me to use as a reference and it really does make my projects look so much cleaner because I know that it's not my strong suit. So there's our little thumb notch. Now we can assemble the box. We're going to okay, roll this up into a nice rectangle box. Awesome size for um, treats that should be readily available and easy to find. I will include an Amazon link for some bulk options for buying these candies in case you want to make these for your um, holiday giving. Maybe you want to take one of these for everybody in the office. You can get the bulk um, Nestle's or the bulk Hershey's with almonds on uh, Amazon. Uh, the Nestle's, the bulk Nestle's can be also found at Costco, by the way, um, if your Costco still has a supply from their Halloween candy. All right, so we've got our seam going to the back of the box. We want the seam across the bottom to go to the back also. So we're going to fold the back to the front and then add some adhesive on the front tab. And then pop that closed. 
such a simple little box. There it is. And perfect for any of these. I think we're gonna do 100 gram this time. <laughs> All right, next up, we're going to grab our festive and fun stamp set. We're gonna do some stamping and coloring. I thought it would be very fun to use our cutie mousse. Got some basic white cardstock and memento ink. Our Stamp Us Dat card class really featured heavy on the giraffe and the rhinoceros. But I know you don't want to just use two thirds of the main characters, right? So our treats are going to feature this adorable little moose. I've got just a scrap of basic white here. And we'll stamp that dude. We're gonna keep with our greetings from Mary Bright and Bold. I did combine these two stamp sets for the Stampa stack because the Mary and Bright stamp set goes with the Mary Bright and Bold designer series paper. It was just too perfect a uh, combination. Here's festive, fun. They're both Stampin' Up sets. The uh, Mary and Bright is photopolymer, so I'm gonna grab my Stampin' Pierce mat, Poppy Parade ink, and we'll do some little sentiments here. I love this, it looks kind of like an old fashioned tape labeler. Isn't that good? And the Poppy Parade ink is so pretty. And now they match our card stack just perfectly. I think I've really gotten my money's worth on Mary Bright and Bold just from these fun greetings. All right, let's color our the mousse. I've got my Stampin' Blends here. Bring in my sample guy. I'm going to start with Poppy Parade and I'm going to do his sweater. I was making a bunch of these. I'd stamp all my mousse and then I'd color all the sweaters. So if I was making, say, I don't know, 24 of these because I was going to bring them to the school with the kids or I was going to bring them to the office. I would stamp 24 mousse and I would color 24 sweaters. And then after I colored the 24 sweaters, I'd check the rest of the image and figure out what else is red. So like the holly berry, the little fruit and the fruit cake and do all the red. The less times you put the caps on and off the markers, the faster and the easier your treats are gonna come together. So if you wanna color for mass producing, do that and you'll find that it goes a lot easier. All right, now I'm going to grab pecan pie. I'm doing dark pecan pie for the fruit cake. You know, it kind of looks like a figgy pudding. Leave the little spaces for the fruit. I did some red fruit. I'm going to go back with some granny apple green and add some little dots of color in there. I'm going to also do the same thing for his hooves with just the dark pecan pie and his tail and his nostrils. But to keep it super simple, because we're probably making a lot of these this holiday season, we're gonna just color the rest of our mousse with light pecan pie. Now I've got light gray granite. I'm gonna do his antlers. you're doing just a few of these and you wanna do some shading with the um, light pebbled path on the antlers, you can do that. But if I'm making a lot of these, I'm just using the pebbled path to color the plate that the fruitcake is on. I'm gonna come in with my dark granny apple green and just dot for the other fruits and the fruitcake. I've got shaded spruce for the leaves, little holly leaves. Bubble bath for the inside of the ears. And then just so that my frosting on my fruitcake doesn't look like I forgot to color it, I'm gonna add a little pool party shadow 
if the pool party looks a little too blue for your liking, it doesn't look white anymore, then just blend it back to the white on the edge with Color Lifter. That's our little mousse. All right, let's cut out our bits. All right, all right guys, our, our bits are cut. Let's add some dimensionals. Be careful at the end of bright, it's gonna go past the edge of your box and so is the antler. Okay, it's all sticky. Let's slide it aside for just a second. We're gonna bring back some of our layers. Here's our designer series paper and I'm going to put some chicken lips on the ends. I like to use my tailored tag punch for this. There's a banner triple punch that you can use. That's current in the catalog now if you need something like this, but a square punch will work for this technique also. Just use a corner on a square punch. I like to roll up the ends a little bit. You might like to glue it down completely flat. That's up to you. Put a liquid glue. I'm gonna put it a little bit high of center. And then we can add our die cut punched pieces glue them together and then to the box it's wider than the box so you might want to put the glue on the banner instead of on the back of the cutout we're going lower lower than center for this because we're going to add some leaf embellishments got our little moosey guy our bright sentiment and it took it so that his foot overlaps a little bit kind of like that and mary up above you saw my little spruce leaf. Let's add some glue. Pop that on. You can add a little piece of dimensional adhesive right behind the leaves that are touching the white circle. That'll secure the sleeves a little bit better. I feel like when you're doing um, treats, because they're going to be handled, they're going to be showed off, they're going to be opened up to remove the candy, and likely the box will sit around for a little bit after the candy's gone because they're so cute. These little bits are wise to just reinforce, so I use a little dimensional there. I've got some uh, black and white gingham left from my Stampa Stat class packet, so I'm going to tie a bow. you're gonna get a half a spool of ribbon in your class packet. So there will be plenty for your coordinating treats and tags and gift wrap needs. Um, it's the easy button for the holiday season. Everything can coordinate nicely with the extra black and white ribbon that you have there. Add it on all your tags and treats. Let's get a glue dot. We'll put it on over the stem of our little branch. So cute. I like a little angle there, leave some room because the last thing we're going to do is bring in our um, iridescent adhesive back discs. Now these are not currently available from Stampin' Up, but you get a half a pack in the class packet. I did the Stampa stack two times. So from a whole pack, this is what I have left over. You're going to have um, some leftover to play with. So it'll be really nice considering you haven't been maybe necessarily able to order them on your own unless you got them very early in the game. So you'll get some of these iridescent uh, dots that match this Merry Bright and Bold Designer Series paper. So it's a fun kit and the leftovers will really serve you well for your holiday treat packaging too. All right, you guys, if you've got any questions about the festive fun Stampa stack, if there's anything I can do to help you stay crafty, reach out marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. Be on the lookout 
for our festive tag stamba stack. The products just arrived today. And that stamba stack will help you make 15 cards using the festive tags kit included in our stampa stack and that's all coming soon check out kitchen table stamper.com for details if you purchase the festive and fun stampa stack you will receive a coupon for five dollars off of our festive tags stampa stack reach out if there's anything that we can do to help you stay crafty to shop stampin up 24 7 you can buzz over to marissa alvarez .net. thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video